The question we now face as a collective is can we come together and heal ourselves and our global community to create a planetary civilization and take our leap to becoming galactic citizens? Could a world of united star systems and planetary communities like we see in things like Star Trek, could it be a real possibility? If so, these beings are likely waiting for us to evolve to move beyond our primitive perspective of separation and limitation before the human race can become active members of such a greater galactic community. How likely is this? Well, while traditional science hasn't yet acknowledged life beyond Earth, the statistics overwhelmingly suggest that humans are not alone in the universe. Current estimates say that our sun is just one of about 100 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. About 7 to 10% of those 100 billion stars are similar to our sun and have at least one planet orbiting them. Of those, the number that have potentially habitable conditions range anywhere from 1.9 billion up to 40 billion Earth-like planets in our galaxy alone. In addition, our universe is estimated to contain nearly 2 trillion galaxies. If just 1% of those galaxies are anything like ours, that means there could be 20 billion galaxies that each host billions of Earth-like planets. This brings the amount of potential Earth-like planets in our universe to staggering numbers, and the odds that there is life beyond Earth are extremely high. But what is the likelihood that life on other planets is as advanced or more advanced than humans on Earth? Our Earth is dated to be 4.6 billion years old. And about 75% of what are called the Goldilocks planets are on average 1 to 2 billion years older than our Earth. And some are even up to 6 billion years older. So these planets have had significantly more time for the evolution of life and consciousness. Humans of Earth are quite primitive, actually, on this scale of advancement, but it gives us a look at where we might be heading. In their search for extraterrestrial civilizations, scientists devised a classification system based on the expected energy consumption of advanced civilizations. Physicist and futurist Michio Kaku explores this classification system in his book, Parallel Worlds. In it, he describes four types of civilizations. A type one civilization is able to harness 100% of the solar energy striking their planet, which comes out to about 10 to the power 16 watts of energy. This ability to harness planetary energy is considered as mastery over the planetary system and it would include the ability to control the weather, change the course of hurricanes, and build cities even on the ocean. As we move beyond that, a Type II and Type III civilizations, they go into harnessing the energy of an entire star or solar system. And then eventually Type III is harnessing the portion of the galaxy and multiple stars in the galaxy. And then the highest classification, a Type IV civilization, has figured out how to directly harness the energy of the quantum vacuum. As we can see, the human civilization here on Earth doesn't even yet qualify as a type one society according to this criteria. We're more like a 0.7 type of society with how much energy we're consuming and the way in which we're consuming that energy but we are progressing towards that leap to a type one society within this century towards greater mastery over our own planet. We see this progression through current emerging technologies and the trends of global economy. And we see this through movement towards things like greater connection, transition towards more global communities. The internet of things is a good example of an emerging technology that is bringing us closer to type one type status with the ability to create a planetary communication system. Other indicators of this shift would include less emphasis on borders between nations, 
International trade, travel, and global economies will trend more towards connected and integrated systems. And we also see more united efforts to address things like pollution on a global scale. For us, to overcome the challenges currently facing humanity, we must overcome the forces of what are called man-made entropy. Things like the greenhouse gas effect that is truly from our input into the environment, pollution, nuclear proliferation, radicalism, disease, all these things that humans have contributed. Michio Kaku describes this transition from our current position to a type one society as perilous. He calls our current generation though, one of the most important generations to walk the earth. The question we now face as a collective is can we come together and heal ourselves and our global community to create a planetary civilization and take our leap to becoming galactic citizens? Can we create a world of peace and respect for all? This is part of our current progression as we master ourselves and step closer toward living as galactic humans. The potential is there, but it is up to us to choose this shift. This shift, however, will not succeed if it is purely based upon the advancements of just science and technology. In order for us to succeed without destroying ourselves first, we must make a shift in consciousness, a spiritual evolution to access greater wisdom and awareness of our connectedness. This paradigm shift requires both a technological and a spiritual evolution. We must widen our view of the fundamental nature of reality to embrace the quantum worldview and the spiritual awareness. To harness the principles of complementarity, entanglement, and so forth, and to understand that we are all one, we are all connected and entangled. As humans, we tend to be very attached to our physical world and body and to progressing at only the physical levels. But in this leaping process towards our next evolution, this will not suffice. We must fully acknowledge that our true self is beyond the physical. This physical body is not who we are. The body's just a vehicle. Who we are, our true life, is eternal spirit or intelligent mind. In order to widen our view of ourselves beyond the physical, to take into account the progression of spirit and consciousness, we must look at this much bigger picture. In looking at the bigger picture, We've been exploring ideas of holograms, parallel realities, and the multiverse. If this reality is a hologram, the source of it all, the true reality, is being projected from somewhere. And that place is what metaphysicians call the Great Central Sun. The science of Kabbalah reveals that there are 22 holograms projected into physical density according to the pattern of the Tree of Life and its 22 pathways. That's 22 different archetypes or holographic encodings of our true self, all running in parallel with each other. Our true self resides at the great central sun. And let's just imagine being at that great central sun, and then it sends out 22 rays or archetypes or holograms each one of those 22 rays anchors then on a different planet or star. And then each of those send a projection of itself back to all the other 21 planets, thereby creating an intricate network and all linking back to all aspects of the self. Each location has all 22 information templates now from the original 22 archetypes. And these are then projected down into the physical density levels of those planets or stars, which then results in what we can call 22 parallel realities that live out on that single planet. In other words, we are galactic beings already. Yet in our reality here and now, with our current consciousness and awareness of ourself, we've basically forgotten this or we don't have full memory of it. The question now becomes, how do we awaken to that level? 
And what does this look like when we live our lives as galactic beings? How can we make this paradigm shift here and now? Let's really paint the picture here of what this looks like. As we expand our conscious awareness and enhance our ability to perceive our reality, we're gonna begin making more conscious choices that affect every part of how we live our life. From the food we eat, to the clothes we buy, to our environment and how we establish our homes and our architecture, the dynamics of work and relationships and how we show up in those relationships, how we take care of our body and our health, we will begin making more conscious choices with a deeper understanding of our interconnected and multidimensional self and what is needed to bring greater harmony and balance to all aspects of our life. I'm Dr. Teresa Bullard, and this is Mystery Teachings. 